good afternoon knowledge will bring you the opportunity to make a difference today is 55th episode of creative domestic cows are the one of the most common farm animals around the world there are an essential source of source for mankind <clears throat> it helps us to stay healthy and strong different types of cattle are common to different geographical area today's creative topic is related to this an overview of cow rearing and management to present this we have dr shrinivas murthy sir with us today before going to going into the class uh, i like to brief about creative creative is a group of people who are very curious to gain new knowledge creative cre means creativity active means activeness to be active we need creativity knowledge square is our tagline sharing of knowledge increases our knowledge <clears throat> vision of creative to promote constructive thinking and progress in various fields and our focus is on our focus is on non textual non academic and non syllabus related knowledge creative is a platform to share the knowledge with a interested audience i thank all the resource persons for sharing their knowledge with us and uh, uh, making this program very successful every weekend we are organizing uh, online talks around 3 to 4 pm on zoom platform and we live streaming our program in on our youtube channel creative gbd i welcome today's speaker dr shrinivas murthy sir and i welcome creative volunteers and creative participants <coughs> i invite sai madhuri to uh, introduce today's speaker over to sai madhuri thank you ma'am good afternoon everyone myself sai madhuri 55th talk of creative is an overview of cow rearing and management to give knowledge about this topic we are having dr shrinivas murthy with us now sir is a chief veterinary officer department of animal husbandry and veterinary science raichur sir did bachelor's in veterinary science and animal husbandry in bidar veterinary college and master in veterinary science in bangalore veterinary college sir joined the department in the year 2001 as veterinary officer worked in various positions involving in regular departmental works participated in various extension and training activities for the farmers and helping them in economic upliftment improving their skills in scientific livestock rearing This is a brief introduction about our speaker today. It's our pleasure to have you in the session, sir. Once again, I will welcome you to the session. Thank you, Creative, for this opportunity. Over to Supriya, ma'am. Thank you, Madhuri. Sir, over to you, sir. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Today. One second, okay. Share the screen. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, very happy to be here with the Creative Group, uh, and uh, it's a very good platform, as Madam told, to to get the knowledge of the various fields. as uh, myself dr sinas murthy i'm having around 21 years of experience in the field and i have uh, moving in and around almost all the farmers and meeting them daily uh, so i will be uh, i will have some experiences uh, here also my uh, this one so if you have any doubts or any questions just you can interrupt me and ask me i will also my share i will share my experiences in the field also <laughs> okay today i'll be covering the the worry of cow rearing and management it's mainly 
uh, as, uh, we, as we know the importance of cow in our life. Here I will be dealing some important aspects like uh, breeds and a uh, little bit of management and about the acts. Actually, now we have heard some acts also about the cows. So I will stress on those things. Going a uh, little bit deep into the technical, it will, be, it will take a long time. So just I'll give an overview of the cows and rearing and its uh, helpfulness. <coughs> Next plan. Okay. As I told, I will be covering the breeds uh, because breeds, uh, it's, a, it's a thing that everyone can know. Huh? From uh, anybody, this one, uh, we should know the breeds and uh, their nature also. And then the artificial insemination programs in our departments, uh, I will uh, take that uh, topic also something. And management aspects and most important, clean milk productions and uh, little bits of diseases aspects. And uh, as I told you, acts and programs, various programs uh, run by the government in uh, safeguarding the cows and uh, <coughs> their acts also. I'll cover all these things. Next slide. As uh, we are dealing with the cow, you know that uh, cow is a sacred animal. As you see, we feel uh, very this one about the cow and because of its uh, religious uh, this one also and the milk we, we, it is called as a kamadhenu kamadhenu because of its value in the milk milk you can drink from uh, from a child to a elder one there is no barrier or any age barrier or any other barriers for the milk so uh, we should be grateful of the cow from uh, since from many veda kalas it's giving all the milk which is very nutritious value till today. <coughs> so, regarding when I get about the cows, uh, we have a cattle, just uh, it's a general term, we have cattle or livestock, where you will be covering the buffaloes, uh, cows, goats, sheep, dog, everything except human because the veterinary doctor will be dealing with the animals. Uh, so, just I will be giving stress importance to the cows, cows today. Oh. So, First, when you go to the cows, let me introduce about the, we should know about the uh, breeds of the cows. We have various uh, breeds in all the animals. You have breeds in goats, sheep and goats, you have in cattle, you are in pigs, and uh, in all the animals you have different breeds. I'll be stressing today only the uh, respect to the cows. First, first, we can categorize the breeds mainly as milk breeds, drought breeds, dual purpose breeds. Based on the need of the animal, where we are using uh, these animals, we categorize milk breeds, drought breeds, dual purpose. Milk breeds mainly for the purpose of milk. We rear the animals, these are called as milk breeds for the purpose of milk. Other is drought animals. Drought animals, these are the for agriculture purposes, especially male cattle. We rear male cattle for the drought purpose. For the farmer, usually farmers use drought animals. One more is dual purpose breeds. Dual purpose breeds are will be having some both characters, milk characters and milk characters and capability to work in the field also. So those are called as dual purpose breeds. These are uh, uh, milk breeds means mainly for the milk purpose, where they will, we will get the high milk yield and they have less working capability. Where drought animals, they have less milking capability and they work, uh, they work very well. <laughs> These three are the main categories. We categorize the cattle uh, in the, on the breeds. Yeah. Next. Depending on the, next we'll go, to, uh, we have designed all the, we divide the three sections. When you go to the cows, we'll get there on the basis of the origin. Origin of the animal. We can categorize again into exotic animals and indigenous animals based on the origin. As the name suggests, exotic animals and indigenous. Exotic are the originated from the other countries. From other countries, we have bought, uh, brought some cows here and, uh, used for upgradation. Those are called the exotic breeds. Next is the indigenous breeds. Indigenous breeds are the ones which we have in our locality or in India, as a whole India. <coughs> Even 
uh, depending on on those areas those breeds have developed depending on that area that climate uh, that area means so they, those are called the indigenous breeds okay we we'll go for the exotic breeds just i'll give the brief introductions of these things you can see the beautiful photos here uh, i think uh, the people might be knowing these things in uh, surrounding uh, their house or anything like that exotic breeds we call these breeds these animals we brought on them from other countries uh, there are many breeds just i will be taking up where uh, whatever the breeds we are using here in karnataka and in india and for the upgradation of our the local cows uh, these there are mainly two breeds uh, you, uh, as you can see on the screen it's a holstein frisian and jersey these are the beautiful cows you can see on this slide also holstein frisian let me take it for the holstein frisian this holstein frisian is the breed which is uh, originated in the holland holland country it has got very good milk yield it has got very good milk yield in their conditions it can give up to 40 liters per day of milk 40 liters per day 40 40 liters per day of milk and it can you can see the color usually it comes in the black and yeah, white ma. forms black and white forms uh, its high yielding nature of the milk is the main important characters even in our uh, indian conditions also it can give up to 20 liters of milk this is a main important uh, uh, breed of high milk yield and one more thing jersey it is the it is also a high yielding cow it's it is originated from the uh, as you see the name jersey jersey island of united kingdom where uh, this breed is uh, originated and it also it is also very good uh, milk yielding breed where we are using for the uh, crossing of the our local cows jersey it gives uh, it is also high yielding uh, it can give also up to 20 liters of milk in our indian conditions and it is uh, very much suitable to our conditions also jersey as compared to the holstein frisian as these are the from temperate reasons these need uh, some cooler areas you can see the adaptations of those animals even in our uh, southern karnataka where the cold areas are there you can see a lot of uh, holstein frisian cross cross bred animals just like our kora polar and ramnagar districts you can see almost a lot of uh, these holstein frisians and jersey cows so these are the two main important exotic breeds we are using for the uh, upgradation of the our local cows next okay we we saw the that's exotic breeds let us be proud of let us be uh, wow. proud of our uh, indigenous breeds of the animals we have around actually there were i think and more than 100 uh, breeds of cattle various breeds in our in india now i think uh, because of the uh, loss of all these breeds we uh, we have i think only 40 breeds which are being which have been characterized you can see especially the in that 30 we can categorize also we are very proud of our animals and they have very variety of uh, characters and variety of uh, physical structures uh, so de depending on their areas of adaptation these indi indigenous breeds mainly just let me take some karnataka breeds then go for the other indian breeds as you can uh, see the screen uh, the amrut mahal and halika you can see the two breeds here it's amrut mahal you would be knowing it's originated in the mysore hasan area where the maharajas of uh, mysore were very much interested in this breed of uh, cow special amrut mahal even we have farm of amrut mahal even they are used these animals for the defense purpose also amrut mahal you can see the color usually is white color and the horns are very sharp and this one very pragmatic this one you know, we are mysore and hasan here as you can you can see these breeds of the animals these are also used to milk purpose it's not that much of high yielding breed but it can be used 
usually males are used for plowing and everything next one is halikar it's uh, it's also same uh, built on the body uh, you can see this slide it uh, this halikar bead is seen in tumkur and uh, mysore areas also it is also has a very good uh, body built up and long horns and sharp horns we characterize the breeds mainly depending on uh, on the color body texture and horns even ears uh, depending on these these breeds are characterized they will have a specialized characters about these things amrut mahal and halikar next this one is malnad gedda as the name suggests this malnad gedda is seen in the forest and malnad areas of and heavy rain uh, rainfall areas just like shivamogga and chikmagaluru and uh, or western ghats areas uh, malnad is malnad is uh, as the name suggests and it's gedda it's a small one it's a small bird as you see the small uh, height will be very small and it is mainly reared for the mill purpose in those areas who are there who are there in malnad area they will be knowing all uh, these things about the malnad gedda cows they are very small in stature and its milk also it's very valuable in terms of medicinal properties urine and milk as we know that the cows also give milk and we use even this urine and uh, urine as a gomutra and some medicinal purpose also it's very good one malnad gedda so it's mainly uh, mainly in the rainy areas of malnad region uh, we can we, uh, we uh, will not see these breeds on the other high this one dry areas also okay, next is krishna valley and devni krishna valley krishna valley its origin we can see the, these animals in and around bijapur raichur and bagalkot areas as we name suggests krishna valley is on the belt of the krishna river wherever the krishna river is there you can see these uh, animals on those areas it will be a uh, small this one uh, small horns and white in color even we get is uh, gray colors also these are also good cows but of not that much milk yielding cows only for drought purpose and uh, for uh, small milk uh, production they are used for in the in these areas next one is devni devni this the origin tract is in bidar and gulbarga and on some maharashtra areas it's uh, you can see the uh, stature of the this ghee devni breed you can see the ear pinna here inside of the ear will be almost always black you can see you can see any animal ear of ear pinna inside of the ear it will be always black and it is a very good quality milk uh, breed Uh, we can use it for the milk purpose also and even face face is also black you can say you can see it in gray color white color main character is main characteristic as i said the ear pinna will be black even it is now nowadays it is crossed with host in frisian cows and they have got a cross breeds for the uh, upgradation for the milk it is uh, almost uh, we have a uh, devni farm in uh, bidar even uh, devni animals They are reared there. Yeah. Uh, these are the Karnataka breeds uh, we see in the, whatever I have explained. We see all those animals in our Karnataka area. For even we have uh, other Indian good breeds for the milk purpose. In that, it's the one is Gir. You usually come on this uh, Gir breed. Usually, it's a uh, origin. Either it's not Bidar. It's wrong. It's Bidar. It has been typed as Bidar. It's Gujarat. On the area of Gujarat, you can see it. The Gir. It's a very good uh, milk yielding animal. We are uh, seeing all these animals here in our area also. Nowadays, uh, even even our uh, institutes, even in our institutes, these uh, straws are there for uh, these animals. Straws are used for the upgradation of the. our local animals it's a very good uh, breed of milk you can see in the picture it's uh, usually commonly it's uh, you see in a brown color and uh, very high milk yielding can go we can get up to uh, 12 liters per day per day of milk 
uh, in Indian breeds, good uh, milk yielding breeds, this one is Gear one is the most important breed. Will be it will be in, uh, usually commonly in brown color. Uh, the most thing is, important thing is ears. Ears will be drooling. <coughs> ears will be drooling, and the uh, forehead. You can see the protruding forehead. It's a very majestic uh, breed. Gear found in Gujarat areas. Gear, as name suggests, it's a gear forest area is there in the Gujarat. You find in that gear uh, areas. Next is Sahiwal. Uh, something uh, Sahiwal. It's a very good breed of milk in India and uh, uh, neighboring Pakistan. It comes uh, first in uh, Indian milk breeds. Next uh, gear we can consider gear also. Sahiwal, as the uh, name suggests, it, Sahiwal is a district. Now it was in undivided area of uh, Sahiwal. This uh, Pakistan, India, Sahiwal area. Now it's a Sahiwal district. Uh, even you can in see in the border areas of the Punjab and uh, Sindh areas. Uh, it's also brown color in brown in color. You can see also white ashes, white ash colors also. It's a very majestic uh, breed. Uh, it will be a, uh, it's a breed of uh, milk in top uh, Indian milk breed. You can see you can this uh, you can see this breed also in Punjab in Sindh area. Next breed is the Tharpark. Tharparkar is also a uh, good breed of uh, milk and even it's used for the uh, drought purpose also. Uh, compared to the this Gheer and uh, Sahiwal, uh, it gives less milk. It is found in Sindh province and uh, uh, borders of the Punjab and uh, uh, Rajasthan areas. It's also white, you can see white colors, gray colors and a very majestic look you can uh, see in the slides also. It's red Sindhi. Next one is red Sindhi. Red Sindhi, it's also a high yielding breed. As name suggests, the, this is seen in the Sindh province area, the bordering of the Pakistan and that uh, Punjab areas. It is also having a very good milk yield. You can get up to 12 to 15 liters of milk. Other breeds, we have so many breeds. I will be taking, I have taken up some important breeds which uh, we can, we, we are generally seeing in our day-to-day -day life. It's a concrete, it's a very majestic breed. You can see in photo also, how, how it is looking. Its horns are very special. It's very majestic look. It's uh, both, uh, it's uh, used for our milk purpose also. In uh, Karnataka also, we see so many cows in Goshalas also. Uh, mainly it's horns, horns are turned upwards. It's a majestic look. You can see it in slides. It's also in, you, you see, in, usually commonly it's seen in gray and white color with uh, long horns, upwards, turned upwards. It's concrete. Its origin is seen in Gujarat and Rajasthan areas, border areas. Uh, it's Ran of Kutch, we call it in Ran of Kutch in Gujarat. And also border areas of the Rajasthan. We see all these animals there. And it has very good uh, meal killed also. Uh, usually commonly in our Indian beads, uh, local beads we get around two to three liters of local cows. Uh, among them, these are the Indian, we can say it in, these are the Indian milk beads as compared to the Jersey and HF. Uh, you can get up to you know, 12 to 15 liters of milk. It's a very good breed of milk on courage. Okay, next, Killar. Killar, uh, it's seen in uh, Maharashtra areas and uh, northern part of uh, Karnataka, be the Bijapur areas. Uh, it's a very good breed of drought, Killar and very majestic look. It's a uh, very, uh, very active animal. In, it can work for uh, six to eight hours daily in uh, fields also. It has very good, it's a white in color. Usually commonly you can see it in white and horns are very sharp and uh, it's very active, act, active in. It's, uh, I think it's mainly for the, uh, it's not uh, that much used uh, in our area as I have seen in the field. They are uh, mainly using it for the or drought purpose in the field also. It's not that much of importance in uh, milk purpose, I think so. One more is Angol. Angol, you call it Angol. It's a very heavy breed. Uh, you should see it. You should see the animal and uh, will be uh, happy to see that animals. As uh, as I'm seeing all these uh, this Angol breeds in, uh, in our areas, in our even working areas also. 
it's a heavy build build angol its origin is from the andhra pradesh that's a ongol district where uh, it is used for the main purpose is plowing even in even i have seen in some competitions also these animals are uh, used in even now on uh, our working area also i have seen so many animals uh, those animals they have got prizes also the farmers will be very much proud of these uh, ongol <coughs> one thing is that uh, so many animals have been exported to other countries especially you can heard of this brazil uh, these animals have been exported to since in uh, about 300 400 years ago these animals have been exported to brazil where they have made it as brahman's brahman bull you can see in uh, search in uh, so google also youtube also you can see the body build how they are we should be indian should be proud of these animals now it's a very majestic uh, they, it has been bred there in brazil and even us also uh, it's a very good uh, majestic uh, heavy uh, breed it's only here in india uh, in karnataka and andhra also we use it for plowing and agriculture purposes very good bro majestic even whenever i see in the field i will be ha very happy to see these breeds next is punganuru punganuru breed just i took it because it's very interesting uh, breed you can see you are say, just uh, seeing just like a two cows actually these uh, those are the not cows they are uh, large animals they are almost uh, they are very uh, just we are uh, seeing those thing these animals as just like cows because these are one of the uh, smallest breed of cattle in world i think world they are very small stature uh, even uh, it's uh, we see these animals in uh, andhra pradesh of uh, chitur district very even in our karnataka also we can see these animals in uh, chitur uh, chiturga and uh, chikmagaluru areas i think so even i saw last time in our uh, it's animal show this pashu mela we organized from the department there were beautiful breeds they, they are very much uh, uh, people are very much eager to see these uh, animals they are very small animals small stature these are reared for the milk uh, because of quite interest i took these uh, Panganuru breeds to explain here. <coughs> okay, these are the main breeds uh, where we can we see all these breeds in our routine areas and uh, in our uh, daily purpose. So I took uh, these uh, breeds only to explain here. Uh, to explain all the breeds, it takes um, more time. So I have took these breeds. Uh, if you have, if I have missed for uh, out of your interest you can suggest me and you can even tell me the other breeds also which can uh, we can take these are the important breeds uh, just like for the milk and this one uh, for uh, mainly for the milk purpose and other things in cows uh, next we'll go for the management management of the cows uh, i will not take much uh, this deep into the management aspects because uh, management aspect it's a, it's a very big aspect Uh, just uh, if i take uh, it's very deep into the, it will be training for me so i will uh, explain you the some important things re regarding the cow managements as i have taken the cow managements so i will explain about the cows <coughs> especially uh, cows management we need just housing and feeding management of pregnant cows we have different aspects in the management management of the cows uh, when we take in the aspect of dairy dairy aspect dairy aspect it's, it plays a very important role for maintaining a, a good dairy a profitable dairy it's very important housing and feeding usually common in few centers i can say that you need a very good uh, it's a plain area it's a dry area and even if it's economical possible means you can provide the sheds uh, there are uh, many things about the sheds you can uh, measurements and everything i will not uh, go much uh, that much deep into the sheds uh, but as for cows also you know you know these things we should provide at least uh, good sheds and uh, good area clean area and waters and uh, these things we can uh, give uh, regarding feeding also feeding also we can mostly almost in the rainy season there will be a lot of green fodder no problem uh, in other months we have to care for those animals you can uh, give the concentrated feeds those concentrated feeds uh, we call it a quality uh, balanced ration 
that uh, balanced relation <coughs> will be prepared from some, some of these jowar and uh, ragi and uh, small pieces and uh, also the, some energy cakes, mineral mixture powders, those will be mixed. <coughs> Even uh, we get uh, the ready-made uh, feeds also in market. We can use those things also. <coughs> those, uh, this balanced ration is very important for the development of the cows. If you need, if you want a higher milk yield and a good health of the cows, especially in the aspect of dairying, you should have a good feeding schedule. For uh, you can provide 75% of the green fodder and 25% of the <coughs> this uh, concentrated feed. One aspect is that uh, last thing I think they have come, uh, covered something plastic management in the those our teacher has covered the uh, covered that I think Dr. Shukla sir who taught us in the uh, colleges. One more thing is uh, uh, what I have seen in the aspect of cows. You can see in the house also whenever the cows come in front of the house, people usually feed those cows with the uh, whatever the rice is there and whatever the leftover the things are there in the house. They feed those uh, things to the cows. Please, I request uh, all the people to don't feed those things because just for your information, uh, I tell you that uh, our stomach is comparable to the dogs, pigs, pigs, dogs. We have same stomach, single stomachs. These animals were cattle, sheep and goat, buffaloes, horn, these things, these have a complex stomach where that is four chambered. They, we call it as rumen, reticulum, homism, homism. Because they, as they feed this uh, fodder now, they will take it inside and churn it. Uh, you see, usually animals when sleeping, uh, they will be chewing the things. So they have the capacity to take it out in the mouth and chew it and send it back to the stomach. When it goes from the rumen to the other parts of the stomach, it will be uh, grinded so in various aspects. So you cannot feed the rice or anything sweets, uh, just like we cannot feed. If it, it, it will get into the stomach and uh, compacted, they will get the uh, this gas and impacted rumen and impacted stomach. You can see so many animals will be dying. As you've seen the last time plastic cells, it lost a lot of plastics and they, even they have addicted to the plastic cells. I have seen so many cows when they operated, you can see the cases of the uh, plastics. You can, you have seen, I think you have seen in all these videos or something you get, you'll, be, you'll be getting in the news. So many, so many, please don't feed uh, this rice and uh, everything and the plastics, you avoid the plastics also for the sake of cows. <coughs> so the structure of the, the structure of the stomachs is varies with us. So we should know, the, if we know those things, you will never feed those things. Concentrates, yeah, you can feed the concentrates, but up to a limited quantity. So during the feeding of the cows, you should take um, care of all those things. Even uh, even pregnant cows also. In dairies, we have very strict maintenance of the for the pregnant cows. We have different schedules for the feeding them. Uh, in uh, pregnancy period for the cows is we usually say it as nine months, nine days. For buffalo, it's for ten months, ten days. The pregnancy period is usually nine months, nine days. During the later day, later time, that is up to seventh, eighth, and ninth month, uh, they usually give the uh, concentrated feeds of uh, one kg, one and a half kg, up to two kgs. They will increase the up to till delivery or parturition. <coughs> so you should take care of the animals during the uh, pregnant period also, because we should, in case of diaries, you have to take care of the pregnant so that you can get the good cough. That cough will become a good cow in future. That is the important things. So the pregnant cows, as you take the pregnant cows, management of the cows is also very important. Cows, uh, as you see, some people, they avoid the feeding of the uh, first milk. As in case of the humans also, cows need the mother's milk. During three to four days, you call it as a colostrum. That's a, it's a little bit thick uh, uh, milk. You should feed, uh, why I'm uh, stressing that point is that people are avoiding those things. It's very important to feed the colostrum. That's the first milk. That, that milk it contains a lot of antibodies and uh, minerals, vitamins. And before, before half an hour, we should feed at least on two cases of the colostrum. So that cause the intestine in that period, it absorbs all the materials very good. It's, uh, 
that uh, antibodies and minerals. So when it absorbs all those things, uh, that uh, immunity will be developed in the cows. If you avoid these things, cows will be will get weaker and in future will not get a good cows, good yielding cows or immunity will be very less. So important is to feed the colostrum. That's why I took this uh, management of cows only to uh, stress on the colostrum. Other things are just to clean it and uh, uh, even uh, for the um, cows cleaning and uh, deworming, uh, all those aspects are there, technical aspects are there. I will not much go into deep much in that uh, those things. Just for the colostrum, just I took this uh, part and I'm stressing to feed the cows before half an hour, two cases, and again, you can feed them to three to four days. So cows will be in a better condition. <coughs> Next, one more important thing is that clean milk production. Uh, because we actually, India was the earlier milk deficient country. Now we have got milk surplus country. country. Uh, we are producing up to 209 million tons of milk yearly. We stand top on the world in the milk production. We, are, we should be proud of our country. So, uh, because of the all the lots of efforts from the all the uh, veterans, para veterans, working people, and this, we achieved these things. But one thing is that even we have that much of milk production, we are very uh, less in terms of milk production per animal. As I said, for the jersey, and I said uh, in before, it's uh, jersey and HF, we can see one jersey and HF cow can give up to 40 liters of milk per day, 40 liters of milk per day in their conditions. In our at least Indian conditions, you can have up to 20 liters per day. But if you take our uh, local cows, local cows, <coughs> local cows, you, you can get around one to two liters, maximum you can get up to three liters. So depending on those uh, milk productions, even though we have, we are first in milk production, and we are having that much of uh, milk production in our country, we should practice hygienic practices. It's a competitive, as you know, it's a competitive market today. It's a globalized world. You need to be hygienic and uh, you should stress on the quality of the milk. As uh, first of all, in clean milk production, we get, we should focus on the health of the animals and cows. As I said in the last previous slide, it's a feeding of the uh, cows, colostrum feeding, and vaccinations, and uh, clean maintenance, and uh, good nutrition, these are the important aspects in the health of the animals. <coughs> in India, about the uh, cleaning of the sheds and everything, as you see in the slides, it should be maintained for the clean milk production because it's a point of the public health importance also, public health importance for the clean milk production so that the diseases cannot be transmitted. Again, the milking utensils, uh, we stress where uh, usually in department, we go for trainings of the farmers and other way uh, in various uh, fields also. We train the people and farmers to go for a clean milk production so that they, they can keep the animals clean and uh, utensils clean. Even milking utensils should be clean. Uh, usually we get in uh, today's market, we get in pockets. We'll not be knowing the brain aspects of the milk. So to provide a clean milk and a nutrition, nutritional value milk, to the public, it's very important to stress on the clean milk production. Even hygienic practices, it's very much less. But nowadays, after giving a lot of much trainings and everything and uh, extension activities, we are getting some positive results in maintenance of the animals. So hygienic practice means it involves around cleaning of the animal sh sheds and uh, keeping away all the dung and everything whatever the dairy byproducts are there away from the shed. As you can see the slide, you see always wash your hands with the, before milking. They should uh, wash their hands before milking and clean the udder with the disinfectants also and milking methods also. Just we can get the training and uh, they can practice the uh, clean milk production hygienic practices. It's uh, very important to go for the quality of the 
good quality of the milk. <laughs> In coming to the aspects after this management and clean milk productions, let me uh, let me mention some diseases. Without diseases, I think this uh, talk could be this one. So uh, let, let's for uh, for uh, just informations. I will go through some diseases we commonly see in our today's field works. Usually, come I come across these fields regularly. These diseases regularly. Some people may think of oh animals uh, don't get diseases. No, it's not like that. Just like humans, these animals also pain will be for animals also for us also. So we should look animals also very carefully. So these animals also get various types of diseases. We get contagious diseases and non-contagious diseases also. Where communicable disease, where communicable diseases are very much severe. The communicable disease means the disease will be spreading from the one animal to the other animals. Main disease is one is foot time mouth disease. As the name suggests, it is very in, almost endemic in India. We have a very good uh, program of vaccination for the, this disease. As name suggests, foot time mouth disease. You can see the slides here in the mouth. You can see the reddish that's uh, sloughing area of sloughing of the tongue and uh, internal internal mucosa. The cows, especially the crossbred cows, uh, crossbred cows, those uh, crossbred cows will be uh, affected more. These uh, crossbred cows, they are very sensitive to uh, these uh, diseases. It's a very um, it's a viral disease. It spreads from one animal to the other very easily. Uh, from the you can see the saliva. Salivation will be more that saliva, and uh, when the animal, other animal gets that saliva, when it comes in contact with that saliva, those animals will be, also get this disease. It's very endemic, and uh, and foot as foot and mouth disease. In foot, you can see it's a specific disease where we call it as cloven-footed animals. Cloven-footed means will have two hooves, two, this one. You, you will not get disease in horse. You get, you get it in cattle, cows, buffaloes, sheep, goat, and other things. We, we will not get it in uh, horses. So it's very contagious. Only thing is to go for vaccination. Go for vaccination. Usually the, we have a government program for uh, just like a polio in uh, humans. We have yearly two time vaccination in February, in September, we vaccinate all the animals of the in all villages. Almost uh, in India, we have a very good program uh, for vaccination of these animals. Even though we have vaccinated so many animals, so many animals, but the uh, recurrence of the, this disease is very much, and this virus mutation, virus mutation causes it to prevent the disease or eradicate it. During this vaccination program, we have eradicated so many diseases earlier, but it's a very challenging factor for the field workers and we are going for this also because in the farmers also as a whole as a whole in india it causes a lot of loss in milk production in terms of gdp also it causes a lot of losses so we are in a very speed mode to the control this disease and we are vaccinating and we are requesting all the farmers to vaccinate against this disease one more is uh, black quarter. This uh, FMD is mostly commonly seen in South, uh, wherever the cross pits are there in South Karnataka. Last uh, some two, three years back, we, we saw it in a very uh, endemic manner. One more is things, the black quarter. As, as it suggests, black quarter, black quarter is a disease uh, where the main thighs and uh, neck areas will be swollen, that muscle will be uh, with the bacterial uh, the infection, it will be muscle mass will be lost and especially the drought animals will lose their uh, capacity for the drought purpose it's a very endemic now because of the vaccinations things you know, it has been brought under control still we are vaccinating all the animals whenever it is necessary it's uh, usually occurs in the black water after the rainy season rainy season all these animals get the infection so we vaccinate these animals before rainy season it's a black water vaccine we use it just vaccinate the animals to prevent this disease. Next one is the hemorrhagic septicemia. It's also bacterial disease, hemorrhagic septicemia. You can see the slide also where the jaw area near the, uh, 
bottom of the jaw will be swollen and it's uh, liquid will be filled in that uh, jaw area and uh, respiratory problems we see in the hemorrhagic septicemia disease these are the common diseases where uh, we see in the field also even in dairy management also you should concentrate on these diseases there are so many diseases i have taken only uh, these diseases for the informations okay next these are the for uh, your kind of information just for the extra information i took these uh, zoonotic diseases what do you mean by zoonotic disease zoonotic disease is a disease where we get the disease from the animals to the humans usually you should i think uh, we should have information in general information about these uh, diseases also we call it as zoonotic diseases commonly we see this rabies and uh, brucellosis anthrax tuberculosis <coughs> these are the common zoonotic diseases you see we get these diseases from the animals to the humans also these diseases can be trans transmitted to humans also and first of all the rabies as you have heard the words rabies when it comes to rabies you get mind you will get in mind the dog that's a by a dog bite so those uh, rabies that the uh, rabid dogs they will bite um, the animals even humans also you can see the uh, this uh, rabid viral disease the whenever the dogs bite the animals animals get these uh, symptoms just like uh, salivation eyes will become reddish and they will not recognize the owner they will uh, come to bite so avoid these animals biting and uh, you should be careful about these type of animals only thing is just uh, we have to we are uh, encouraging the owners and even training the owners and telling them to vaccinate their dogs for the rabies vaccination there is a one rabies vaccination you can provide it every year so that we can prevent the rabies even for animals also post bite also you can give even even humans also it's very same symptoms you can see a man will cry and whenever he sees water he will go run away and he just he will bark like a dog the, i think the treatment is not effective so we should concentrate on this vaccinations there are as you know in humans we have seven doses that's zero day three day four day and uh, 14 day just we like 28 day we give like this vaccinations but uh, before that vaccination it's very very important to prevent that disease next is brucellosis <coughs> this one is also uh, where they, usually the field veterinarians and working with the animals dairy workers they get uh, these diseases also brucellosis is common in dairy animals where this uh, pregnant animals in the abort uh, abort in the mid period only so even humans get the uh, fever when humans get this disease they will get fever joint pains so even even infertility in case of males also it is seen you can see in slides uh, this is a field uh, photo i took during my vaccinations of the brucellosis we have to take care of even during also vaccination it's a live vaccine whenever you will, you will be exposed to that vaccine you can get that disease so we will have some gloves and mask and everything uh, whenever vaccinating the the uh, these animals will usually commonly vaccinate the cows female cows below one year those are the precautions uh, taken during vaccination you can see in photo all the precautions we have to take that was a field photo during our business vaccination next one is the anthrax anthrax is also a very uh, zoonotic disease where humans usually get uh, the humans uh, when animals die you see the blood through the ears nose and all the orifices It's also bacterial disease. Even humans also get the this disease. Uh, usually in our my area also, I have seen in my during my field experience and my services also. Even I saw in one uh, one time we saw it in sheep and goats. Even we alerted the district administration. Uh, they helped us in getting the JCBs and everything. We dig pit and uh, all the animals were buried in that so that uh, the other villagers villagers and animals won't get the disease. you have to take so much action uh, only animals have to be dig and uh, some uh, calcium powder should uh, put uh, and closed we have to take the precautions for that also tuberculosis tuberculosis also you have seen in earlier days nowadays it uh, don't see much that of uh, in india usually commonly the people have the habit of boiling the milk so we don't have that much of uh, transmission usually if they get the raw milk or anything even some nodules or tubercle nodules in animals go to the milk and those whoever the people milk that those drink drink the milk 
they will get this disease. So we should be uh, careful about uh, these diseases of the rabies, brucellosis, and anthrax, tuberculosis. Because rabies, as you see, so many in cities and also the rear dogs, also pets. Uh, we should almost all the owners should vaccinate the dogs with rabies every year. We should be careful about these diseases. <laughs> Before going into ads, I would like to remind some uh, some artificial uh, insemination programs. Uh, artificial insemination programs. So we have some government from government side. We have artificial insemination programs. As I told earlier, it's our cows give very less milk. We can get up to three liters, two liters per day. Whereas in Jersey and HF, we get around 20 liters per day. So what we do is through artificial insemination, we upgrade our the our local cows. Where in artificial insemination, they they will maintain high uh, breed profile animals in the farms. We get the semen from those bulls and that will be into getting the straws in, in our institutes. Uh, in our institutes, we'll have a can. We would have seen that can, liquid nitrogen can will be there. That liquid nitrogen can, uh, it uh, maintains around minus 196 degree centigrade. Those straws will be maintained in that uh, minus 196 degree centigrade. <coughs> so we have now, present we have now all the this uh, jersey straws we have, HF Walsh inflation straws we have. Even uh, one thing is that when we are going for the cross breeding of these animals, so sometimes we think we are losing our native breeds. So to promote the native breeds also, we have some uh, Thar Parker uh, straws and uh, gear, Devani uh, straws also being provided to us. We are inseminating all the local cows with uh, these straws. And uh, by these things only, we have crossbred animals. This uh, crossbreeding main thing is to get mainly the higher milk production. We have very high good quality genes in HF and Jersey. And you have very good disease resistant genes in our local animals. So when we crossbreed our animals, we get the crossbred, which has the character both of high yielding and less uh, getting of the less diseases. So those genes will be combined. We'll get a uh, crossbred animal where I have seen in my field experience also <coughs> in my working area. Uh, they are rearing around local cows. Just we inseminated with the Jersey cows. Earlier they used to get around three liters of milk. Now they are in my practice only. I have seen in my eyes, through my eyes, they are getting around 12 to 15 liters of milk per day. He was very happy. He is using around two to three liters for his house. Other 10 liters he can sell. They get the income, daily income. That's economic uh, stature of the farmer will be increased. We can help the farmers uh, so that they can come up economically. In that regard, it helps our uh, upgradation of the cows. It uh, is very much helpful for the farmers also. But in that aspect, you, you must be having some doubt. So we go for the vaccine crossbreeding. And even you can see in South also, Kolar, we have almost HF crossbreds. So we should take care of our local breeds also. So we can preserve our breeds also. So I need some suggestions or uh, this one from you people also. You can think also how we can maintain our breeds also and we can increase the milk production in, uh, in our India uh, so that uh, all the uh, public will get the uh, required milk quantity. So it's, uh, we can leave it for the, this uh, um, suggestions and everything. So we can go for a positive things. Next, coming to the, some, I want to highlight some ads recently we have read in some newspapers or anything like that. Just we have uh, those uh, ads. Uh, I thought it is uh, um, so okay to mention those uh, ads. So the general public also should know all these ads. We have uh, recently introduced the Karnataka Prevention of Slaughter and Preservation of Cattle Act. I think most of people have heard about the cows. Actually, it was uh, there was a act. There was an act in 1964, Cattle Cow Prevention of Cow Slaughter Act. It has been modified and made it strict. Stringent act act has come into effect from 2021 February. So many changes, as you can see the in that you have a prohibition, prohibition of the slaughter of cattle. Earlier, 
the cows, uh, the cattle above the age of 12 years were allowed to slaughter. And uh, even bullocks and uh, less uh, this one, um, uh, cattle were slaughter, allowed to slaughter. But from now onwards, it has been very strict. No cattle could be slaughtered without the certification of the veterinarian. That too, only uh, you, you, you cannot slaughter the cows or cattle and only uh, in the act, next, only above the, you can see the some acts I have this one, uh, only the animals in buffaloes, only above 13 years, with the certification of the veterinarian, you can go for a slaughter. There is uh, no way to slaughter cattle or other cows. Uh, so it's very stringent action is there, prohibition of the slaughter of cattle and uh, even restriction of the transport of cattle also. No person can transport for the uh, slaughter of the animals. They will be checked stringently by the uh, competent authority. And one more is restriction on transport of cattle outside the state also. They will be uh, rigidly uh, seen and only if the farmer, if he, if he wants to get the animals for the agriculture purposes, so you can get a, um, a certificate from the company, especially the veterinarian. You should have one compulsory certificate from the veterinarian. Then only he can transport the animals. For agriculture purposes, it is, uh, he can transport the with certificates also. So mainly this is a prohibition of slaughter of cattle, restriction on transport of cattle, restriction on transport of cattle and also the state also. These are the acts you can go through those, those things even also there. These, in these acts, some penalties are there. Just uh, say a person will be, uh, ha will be having a penalty of around 50,000 up to uh, five lakhs of uh, one and rigorous imprisonment from uh, three years to five years of uh, jail. So you can uh, see the penalties also. These are the stringent actions regarding the cows. One may, one may ask how, when uh, such a stringent actions are the acts are there, then uh, somebody uh, may ask how who will look at all these animals. So uh, we have next some programs. Uh, even this one, you can see the last programs. It's uh, Pune Koti, Dattu Yojana, and Goshalas. Uh, so many you would have read in uh, newspapers also. There are uh, so many Goshalas opened up by governments also, and even private around 200 Goshalas are there in Karnataka, and more than 100 uh, Goshalas are already opened by the government help and government had made it to heaven every district on Goshala and even Taluka Salsa, we have all it. So where the animals can be left in the Goshalas and some, uh, some veterinarians will be looking all those Goshalas and uh, all those animals also. One more is uh, new, is Punya Koti Dattva Yojana. It's a very good program uh, where uh, the interested people can adopt a cow in the Goshalas. They have a portal for that. You can search in Google also. You can you have a Pune Koti Dattu Yojana. You have a portal wherever the that uh, details of the Goshala cows will be there. You can choose a cow. You can see all the details there. And about 11,000 rupees per cow per year you can provide for uh, maintenance of that cow. Even I think it will be launched uh, uh, today itself. I think uh, it's a very good business. Whoever is interested, they can go for adoption adoption of the animals. This is the public and uh, uh, government uh, adoption programs. So uh, by these things, we can help the cows and uh, for maintenance of the or local cows, wherever the stray cows and uh, we have wherever left uh, Wandering cows are they just we can take those cows as uh, adaptation, adaptation, and we can maintain all these uh, animals in the Goshalas also. These are the uh, main uh, programs and uh, related to the cow production. And all these, uh, this cow management and dairy management, it takes a very some technical this one when we go for the dairy. And these are the general things uh, I have put all these uh, important some issues regarding uh, uh, breeds, 
and uh, artificial insemination programs and uh, the management a little bit uh, touch up with the management and the clean milk production clean milk production also where the quality of the milk has to be maintained for the competition in this uh, globalized world and lastly and uh, protecting our uh, these cows for the uh, future purpose and we have goshalas as punak gotu adoption programs we can in one all those uh, programs also we can protect the cows these are the subjects just uh, covered for the just uh, information uh, we can go deep little bit into the technicals so i didn't go that much just to uh, have an overview of these all these subjects yeah. any queries and uh, questions can be just i unmuted sir thank you sir uh, if any questions you can unmute and ask questions to sir <coughs> any questions your questions suggestions are there also we'll take it no problem Uh, sir, one question in chat box, sir. Okay. Okay. I feel okay. Some asked of the uh, prospects and uh, certain field. Just uh, prospects and uh, one thing, uh, the. It's very important to have an interest in animals. Uh, just you ask your kids uh, wherever they have that uh, interest. Uh, those people should be uh, interested in the animals and uh, serving rural areas. Uh, then they can go for uh, its uh, veterinary science. Even I think prospects. Uh, uh, usually, I will be think uh, by seeing the the animal populations. It is uh, uh, reducing day by day. and even people are go for mechanizations so i think in future it will be something uh, restricted prospects will be restricted i think so okay sir ganesh hello sir myself ganesh okay sir nam halli kade villagers ge yav tarahada hasugalu belisidre thumba olle sir जर्सिंग गोमूत्र नम लोकल आकल सल नि गोमूत्र लोकल आकल कॉन्सट्रेट गीर देवणी हाल प्रमाण जैसे साहिवाल प्रिफर सर सीमे हसु हालाद नाटी हसु हालाद्र मेले कमेंट सर अदेलबा आता है यूशली कामन नम ऐन नम लोकल हसुला मलना गिडल अद्वे गुड मेडिसनल प्रॉपर्टी या सतम वातावरण नोड़े ना सतम बेतक ना फुड ऐन 
ಅದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ನಾವು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ನಮ್ಮ ಲೋಕಲ್ ಆಕಳದಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಮೆಡಿಸಿನಲ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಅಂತಾನು ಹೇಳ್ಬಹುದು ಆತರ ಇದೆ ಇವೆಲ್ಲ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಈಗೆಲ್ಲ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಿದ್ರೆ ಕಾನ್ಸಂಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಫೀಡ್ಸ್ ರೆಡಿಮೇಡ್ ಫುಡ್ಸ್ ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ಇದು ಮಾಡೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಕಾಣಬಹುದು ಬಟ್ ಆದ್ರೂ ನಮ್ಮ ಲೋಕಲ್ ಕೌಸ್ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಲೋಕಲ್ ಕೌಸ್ ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಏಟು ಈಗ ಏವನ್ ಏಟು ಮಿಲ್ಕ್ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಕೇಳಿರ್ಬೋದು ನೀವು ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಅದು ಬೀಟಾ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರೋಟೀನ್ ಇದರಿಂದ ಬರ್ತದೆ ಅಲರ್ಜಿ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಸ್ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ಅಷ್ಟೇ ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಏವನ್ ಇಂದ ಏಟು ನಮ್ಮ ಆಕಳಿಗೆ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಮೆಡಿಸಿನಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟೀಸ್ ಇರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಅದನ್ನ ನಾವು ಪ್ರಿಫರ್ ಮಾಡಬಹುದು ಹಲೋ ಯಾರು ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ರೈಸ್ ಮಾಡಿರೋ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಕೇಳ್ಬೋದು ಇಫ್ ಎನಿಬಡಿ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಸರ್ ಸರ್ ಸೀಮೆಯ ನಾಟಿ ಹಸು ಇದು ಕುಡಿಬಾರ್ದು ಹಾಲು ಕುಡಿಬಾರ್ದು ಅಲ್ ಹಾ ಅದೇ ಒಂದೇ ಜಾಗದಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದೇ ಹುಲ್ ತಿಂದಿದ್ರು ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಇರುತ್ತ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳ್ತಿದೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಸೈಂಟಿಫಿಕ್ ವೇ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅಷ್ಟು ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಏನು ಕಾಣೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಅಥವಾ ಅದನ್ನ ಕುಡಿದ್ರೆ ಈ ತರ ಇದಾಗತ್ತೆ ಅಂಬುದು ಏನು ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಇರಲ್ಲ ಸೈಂಟಿಫಿಕ್ ಆಗಿ ಇದಾಗಿ ಒಂದ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ನಮ್ಮ ಲೋಕಲ್ ಆಕಳುಗಳು ಇರ್ತವೆ ಮೊದ್ಲಿಂದ ಒಂದ್ ಜೆನೆಟಿಕ್ ಮೇಕಪ್ ಒಂದ್ ಏನ್ ಇರುತ್ತಲ್ಲ ನೀವು ಒಳಗಡೆ ನಾವ್ ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಲ್ಲ ಈ ಜೆನೆಟಿಕ್ ಮೇಕಪ್ ಬೇರೆ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಆಕಳುಗಳ ಜೆನೆಟಿಕ್ ಬೇರೆ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅವು ಹೆಚ್ ಎಫ್ ಅಥವಾ ನೀವು ಜರ್ಸಿ ಹಾಕಳುಗಳು ಮೇಕಪ್ ಬೇರೆ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಏನು ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಇರಲ್ಲ ಈಗ ನಾವು ಮಲ್ನಾಡ್ ಗಿಡ್ಡ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ವಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಲವು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ವಾತಾವರಣ ಸುತ್ತಮುತ್ತ ಇರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಒಂದು ಬೆಳೆಗಳು ಇದು ಇರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಮೆಡಿಸಿನಲ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಸ್ ಪಡಿಬಹುದು ಬಟ್ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಈಗ ಸೀಮೆ ಈ ಹಸು ಹಾಲು ಕುಡಿದ್ರೆ ಈ ತರನೇ ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಅಷ್ಟು ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ನಂದು ಅಭಿಪ್ರಾಯ ಇಲ್ಲ ಬಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಮೆಡಿಸಿನಲ್ ಫೈಲ್ಸ್ ನಾವು ನಮ್ಮ ಒಂದು ಲೋಕಲ್ ಆಕಳಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ನೋಡ್ಬೇಕು ನೋಡ್ಬೋದು ಆದ್ರೆ ಈಗ ಈ ಪಾಕೆಟ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಯಾಶನ್ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸಸ್ ಆಗತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಈ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸಸ್ ಇಂದ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಸ್ ಮಿಲ್ಕ್ ಒಳಗೆ ಇದ್ರದ್ದು ಕಡಿಮೆ ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ಅಂತ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಅದು ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಬೇರೆ ಯಾವ್ದು ಮೇಜರ್ ಇದು ಇಶ್ಯೂ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ನನ್ಗೆ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ವಿತ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕಲ್ ಆಗಿ ತಿಳಿಸ್ಕೊಟ್ರಿ ಸೊ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಅದೇ ಅದ್ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಹೋಗಕ್ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಹೀಗಾಗಿ ಅದೊಂದು ಟ್ರೈನಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ತರನೇ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ನಾನು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ತಗೊಂಡು ಒಂದು ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಶನ್ ಕೊಡೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಪಟ್ಟಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಎಸ್ ಸರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್